Hello and welcome to the Yesterday Show. Public scandal and political intrigue never seem to be far from popular culture, whether in the critical acclaim accorded to Frost Nixon or the second home scandal of Jackie Smith. But this week, we at the Yesterday Show have uncovered something very special. We are pleased to welcome one of the most enigmatic figures in government, a man who has worked under four prime ministers. Well, not quite under. Due to retire at the end of next month. He has agreed to speak to us under the strict condition that we don't reveal his identity. In return, he has promised to reveal us many secrets about the goings-on in government. Welcome, sir. Good evening. Uh, first things first, what shall we call you? Please call me... X. Only that sounds too mysterious, so call me... Mr. X. No, wait, that gives too much away. Mrs. X. No! Oh, oh, damn, just call me Cecil. Cecil? Cecil who? Don't think you can disgrace the glorious family of Weissman. Oh, damn, I've given that way too. Cecil Weissman, how did you come to work for Mrs. Thatcher? Mrs. Thatcher and my family go back a long way. Her father, as you may well know, was a greengrocer. And my grandfather used to wander down to his shop in Grantham to buy peaches and cucumbers. And what was your first position? I can't be all that specific. But I was holder of the post of junior assistant under cleaner of Her Majesty's wash basin in the cupboard under the stairs for three months, two weeks, and four days. Hardly the most prestigious job in the world. Ah, but from small beginnings. My second post was Senior Assistant Undercleaner of Her Majesty's Wash Basin in the Cupboard Under the Stairs, a post I held for four months, two weeks and three days. Well, I guess we don't have to document every step of your illustrious career. And then... Thank you. And then my great step up came. And what was that? In August 1980, I was appointed President to the Order of the Brown Dustpan and Bucket. Again, hardly prestigious. What did you learn about Mrs. Thatcher during your time in that post? I found out something startling. Go on. Margaret Thatcher had... Yes? Margaret Thatcher had... a husband. Well, yes, she married Dennis in 1951. What's so startling about her husband? She kept that very quiet. What the hell is going on? Wait, I have more secrets to tell about. My name is Hazel Winfrey Bottom, and I am here to protest on behalf of the Feminist, Naturalist, Nationalist People's Front. We are here to protest at the fact that you haven't interviewed any women and that none of your interviewees have appeared on the nude. Well, we were going to interview Jodie Marsh, but she cancelled, so... Silence! I am not leaving here until you interview me in the nude. All right, then. Sit down, madam. Now, what is your name? Hazel Winfrey, madam. Thank you. We have now officially interviewed at least one woman on this show. Now, on to the next... Wait, wait, you can't do that! Or something faintly resembling a woman at any rate. How dare you! Security. <laughs> now you can't do this to me! I know my rights. Well, we may not have discovered any official secrets, but this is still a world first for the Yesterday Show, a naked woman in the studio. I'm sure right at the times about this, or even the ball. And now to the international report. As always, our report this week comes from Alex, who is speaking from... From where are you, Alex? Uh, hi, Tom. I'm here, here in Brussels to report on the Europe-wide talks to deal with the credit crunch. Europe's leaders are all assembled in a desperate bid to save their bacon. Right, good. Uh, now I understand that this summit was prompted by Nicolas Sarkozy's promise that he would bail out the French car industry. Yes, that's correct. So what kind of support does he have? Well, uh, because Sarkozy's plan is quite blatantly protectionist, you could expect his support to come from his hardest hit by the banking crisis. And sure enough, nine out of the ten nations who joined the EU back in 2004 
have pledged their support for this measure. So, is Gordon Brown fighting a losing battle? Well, uh, it's difficult to say at this stage. Um, the greatest problem surely remains his reputation at home. So perhaps he'll use this summit to demonstrate his international credentials, um, uh, just as he's done with the, the G8 in the past. You don't sound too good, Alex. What do you mean? Well, your speech is slurry. You're speaking much more slowly than normal, and I can hear a distinct beeping in the background. Oh, well, that's just my BlackBerry. Is everything okay? Yeah, um, everything's absolutely fine, yeah. Really? Uh, no. Um, actually, things can't be worse. You're not in Brussels, are you? Yes, I am. Uh, I'm just not in that part of Brussels. How do you mean? Well, I'm currently lying in a bed in a St. Pierre hospital in the city centre, having been flown here on expenses from Monte Carlo last week. Have we really got the money for that? So those balances at the casino beat me up pretty badly. Uh, both my arms and legs are in plastic casts, so I've got cracked ribs, and I think one of my kidneys is missing or something. I haven't seen it in a while. You expect me to believe that? There's a famous rumour that when you're under the knife, people sometimes help you to any organs they don't think you need. But one of the nurses was looking at me funny last night, so I figured that... Oh, don't worry. I'm sure it'll turn up eventually. He's got to be around here somewhere. Yeah. So none of that stuff you've just talked about was your own work? No, I'm afraid not. But, hey, you can't be a roving reporter if you've got no arms or legs. And despite losing as much of our money in the casino, you still insisted on being flown first class to Brussels for treatment? Well, as bad as uh, the hospital may be with all the organ harvesting, it's... Um, Still better than uh, being stuck on a British trolley in a British hospital. I mean, given the choice, what would you choose? Alex, I hope you get well soon, so that when you come back to this country, I can give you a good hiding myself. Thanks for your kind words, Tom. My pleasure. Sadly, that's all we've got time for this week. Hope you can join us again soon, but for now, back to mumbling on. <laughs> 